Hi, I'm Daniela and this is Jocelyn. Thanks for coming back to our channel. Today we're going to share more about endometriosis and infertility. To recap, in seeing the fertility specialist, um, they have determined that there are signs of endometriosis on my uterus and a possible endometrioma on my right ovary. Endometriosis is a disorder where the tissue that grows around the uterus is found growing in other places like the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and even the intestines. At the first signs of Daniela's OMA, the doctors and nurses were very casual about it and explained that people get pregnant with OMAs all the time. Being that we've now had three failed attempts at ICI, the doctors and myself decided it would be a good time to take a deeper look at what's going on in this possible endometriosis. Endometriosis is linked with an increased risk of having difficulty becoming pregnant, otherwise known as infertility, and studies have shown that the amount of endometriosis found during the exploratory surgery will be linked to your chances of becoming pregnant. In doing research, we found that there is a staging system in evaluating endometriosis. With stage one of endometriosis, there's minimal disease. So they just find small specks of endometriosis without any scar tissue being present. In stage two of endometriosis, they find mild disease. There are still small implants around the abdomen, but usually about less than two inches, and there's still no scar tissue seen. Stage three of endometriosis, or moderate disease, is where deep pockets of endometriotic fluid may form, creating cysts or endometriomas. There may also be scar tissue present in the ovaries and fallopian tubes, as well as the abdomen. Stage four of endometriosis, the last stage of endometriosis, is where you're gonna find a lot of cysts and scar tissue. There will be cysts on the ovaries, and then you can find scar tissue in the uterus, the lower parts of the intestines, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Seeing as I have not had a laparoscopy yet, it's hard to know what stage of endometriosis I may have. Being that there is a cyst found on my right ovary that's under two centimeters big, um, it might indicate that I'm in stage three because that's the stage where the cysts are present, but there's no way to know until I have that procedure. We've scheduled a consultation with the OBGYN surgeon to see what stage of endometriosis Danielle is in and if we need exploratory surgery or laparoscopy to remove the cysts or scar tissue. About 30% of women with endometriosis have trouble getting pregnant. It is thought to be related to scarring on the fallopian tubes or the ovaries, poor egg quality, problems with the embryo traveling from the fallopian tubes down into the uterus, and implanting in the uterus because of the damage or scar tissue found. Changes in the organs in the pelvis, such as adhesions or scarring and blockage of the fallopian tubes. Endometriosis has also been known to alter the immune system and change the hormonal environment around the egg, which would prevent the growth of quality eggs or inhibit the implantation of an embryo into the uterus. If you're struggling to get pregnant and suspect it may be due to endometriosis, you should make an appointment with your reproductive endocrinologist or a gynecologist who specializes in reproductive surgery to help get an idea about what's going on in there. They will likely review your health history and perform a physical exam. A laparoscopy is sometimes done to diagnose endometriosis, especially if there are a lot of symptoms. So what are some symptoms to look out for with endometriosis? Pain is going to be a really big symptom. Pain during menstruation, you may feel like in your lower abdomen or your lower back. You may feel pain during intercourse, pain during urination when you're on your period, and during bowel movements while on your period. Other symptoms to look out for may be an abnormally heavy menstrual flow and infertility. So at this time, with the information that we do have, we're unsure about what our next steps are going to entail. We are currently waiting for our appointment with the surgeon to let us know what they feel about the cysts and if surgery will increase our chances of getting pregnant. In the meantime, we're just doing some things to help my body grow healthy eggs. For example, we're eating a lot of whole and natural foods, less processed foods. 
I'm also taking vitamins to help with the egg growth as well as doing acupuncture. We're also exploring all of our options for pregnancy, even looking into IVF. So we've been working with financial counselors and exploring grants and other opportunities to help with that. These last few weeks have been obviously very difficult for us having no clear path or something to look forward to as a next step. And the waiting is kind of, I'd say, painstaking. <laughs> yeah, the, the stopping and starting waiting game is really wearing on me because I'm a planner and I like to do things in a certain way and I never in a million years imagined this long after our marriage would we still be trying to conceive. So it's really uh, frustrating and disappointing and I, the sense of helplessness just kind of builds the longer we're in this game and have nothing to show for ourselves. I think the hardest part for me is like having to wait for this appointment. It's like every month that goes by is like a month that we're wasting eggs. And you know, I just wish that we had like a sperm donor on hand so that we could just keep trying. Cause people are always like, just keep trying. You never know when it could happen, but it, that's not like really possible for us. You know, we don't, we can't just keep doing it every night because there is no sperm here. <laughs> And if we just keep wasting money on sperm at that point, we could have just done IVF. Exactly. So we're kind of at a crossroads where we have to just like, do we want to bite the bullet and find a way to finance IVF, which feels really scary, or, you know, wait for this doctor's appointment. Would IVF be best after surgery, before surgery? It's really hard to know and there's a lot of conflicting information out there on the internet. So coming up with a decision right now seems like, I don't wanna use the word overwhelming again, but it's just like, where the hell do you turn? Something that could be helpful for us is if anyone out there has any positive stories of them struggling with endometriosis and infertility and getting their pregnancy and their healthy baby, we'd love to hear about it. Or just even things you did to cope during this process. I'm going to be honest in saying like it's really hard for us to think about, you know, coming up with new content when most of the things we talk about are trying to get pregnant, conception, like how same-sex couples do it. Um, now that we're truly dealing with a case of infertility, unexplained infertility, it's hard to see like a clear path about what we should talk about next. If you guys have a direction you would like us to go or you want us to talk about a specific topic, definitely let us know because we'd love to keep posting weekly for you um, and we definitely will try to <laughs> it's just hard to overcome these really deep feelings of loss and sadness and put a happy face on anyone else who's struggling through something like this we're here for you definitely reach out to us we'd love to chat to stay up to date on our journey thus far don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you soon